Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. I've got a couple of guitars to unbox with you guys tonight, starting with this absolute beast of a Les Paul. I saw this thing get listed on Reverb and I knew I had to buy it because this has to be my favorite finish on Les Paul reissues. And I don't normally buy a lot of reissues because they're cool, but they're not necessarily highly collectible unless you're getting like a Brazilian rosewood fretboard, a NAM show display piece, or a limited edition, like an anniversary model. But this one is neither of that. It's just a fantastic example of one that a player should own and gig out. But I definitely wanted to see this thing in person to see if it looked as good here as it did in the seller's photos on Reverb that one late night buy. So let's go ahead, open this thing up and see its beauty. Oh yeah, there it is. Factory burst finish. It's the best color in my opinion when it comes to these reissue style instruments. Now this one is not actually an R9 because we did document a factory burst NAM show display piece. And that's one of those guitars, yeah, I probably should have kept it. That was a fantastic one from the 2019 NAM show. But this is an R8. So the neck profile is going to be a little bit different on this one. And obviously our serial number starts with 8 instead of 9. But that's the funny thing about these reissues. R8s don't quite sell for as much as R9s. I mean, even brand new, I think these are like, what, 5,500? Whereas the R9s, they're a little bit more than 6,500 nowadays. So if you're just a player and you don't really care about neck profile too much, like this is just a chunkier neck than an R9, but I don't think it feels overly chunky. I mean, that is a pretty big baseball bat, but you're going to be noticing this has an extreme case of binding bleed, which if you're not familiar with what that is, it's the aniline dyes in the red neck of the finish. It leaches into the binding and turns it red. Now, apparently that happens on originals. I have not actually seen originals in the flesh, but this always just looks a little bit extreme in my opinion, but hey, it's part of the whole deal of these reissues because that's how you get that extreme red coloring on the back of these that makes them look so unique and iconic. This one's pretty nice too because it's lightweight but still has a decent heft within the body. So the color's nice and the top is okay. I'll be honest, I'm a little bit disappointed. Like I thought this was gonna have more movement than it does. I mean, it still has good movement. Maybe not so much in this artificial lighting, but when you get it into natural sunlight, here, I'll take some B-roll shots of this to really show that off. But it's a quilt top. You don't find that as often, but it's one of those quilts that's so wide that you can't really tell. Is it flame? Is it quilt? What is it? But it's the factory burst finish. But uh-oh. This is why you take your switch tips off, because now the switch tip has been broken into a hundred million pieces. It's probably scratched my guitar up, it'd be my guess. There's definitely some impressions back here, but I don't know if that was there before or not. That's how it is when you buy used instruments. Oh, here's another piece. Another piece up here. Oh man, they even had a little baggie in here that the original dealer put it in. <laughs> it's unfortunate because these historic switch tips are pretty expensive to replace because in order to get a replacement, you have to wait for them to be in stock. So people that have them, they charge a premium for them. So I'll have to put some sort of a switch tip on here because there's definitely no gluing this back. <laughs> But the other cool thing about Factory Burst is it doesn't look like they offer it anymore. So if you find a Factory Burst reissue, I mean, if you like a really nice dark heritage cherry looking burst that hasn't faded, these are the ones I personally like the best. So if you're interested in being the next owner of this one, you can check it out on my website or on Reverb. Let's go ahead and move on to our next one. But first we have a sponsored message. The sponsor of today's unboxing episode is Sweetwater. Sweetwater is a premier place to buy gear, guitars, and whatever you need for your musical enjoyment. I shop Sweetwater all the time in order to pick the best example of the guitar I'm looking for. So for example, if you're in the market for a cool acoustic, but you notice that they come in maple backs and sides, you can actually see the figuring of each guitar, which is what a viewer of the show did to fall in love with the next guitar that we'll be unboxing. Be sure to follow my affiliate link in the description to go to Sweetwater's giveaway page, where they're giving away tons of gear. All they have to do is sign up with your email address and you'll be entered to win. And of course, all their sales engineers are standing by for any of your immediate purchase needs. 
So now let's get on to unboxing that guitar that I was just talking about. So this is part of my forwarding service. Sometimes dealers aren't allowed to ship things overseas or they don't want to, and that's when my forwarding service comes in handy. You can check that out on my website. It's under the New Guitar Day tab, and then all the way at the bottom, it's a hyperlink. You just gotta click on that. So if you're outside of the US and you need help getting something, it doesn't have to be a brand new guitar. It can be anything used. It gets expensive to ship this stuff across the world because of import duties and taxes on top of the shipping costs. However, if there's a super special guitar that you need in your life, I'm here to help you. And that is the story of this Taylor. So apparently this was a Sweetwater exclusive. They got some really nice specs on this thing and I am a big fan of Taylor guitars, especially their soft case gig bags. Like over here, I have my personal collection, Taylor. I believe I've owned this one since 2014, maybe before that. No, I've got my original receipt in here. It's kind of fading though. Yeah, it looks like I paid $650 for it on 219 2013 So after tax, I was at 700 bucks. This is a Taylor 210E. I highly suggest these things. It's such a fantastic little guitar. Like I cannot bring myself to sell this, even though I don't necessarily use it a lot. When I need an acoustic, this is my personal Taylor. Because I went to Guitar Center that day thinking I would spend, you know, up to like four or five thousand dollars just as a treat for myself to have the nicest acoustic around. But I was surprised by this Taylor and just how fantastic it was. It beat out all the higher end Gibsons, even some of the higher end Taylors. So I've always kept this thing around for that reason. <laughs> Take a look at the used market. The 210Es are definitely worth more than they were new. But anyways, back to their soft case gig bags. I think they're the best ones in the market because it's got the ease of carrying around a gig bag, but still like the semi-rigidness of a hard case. But now this, I mean, this is <laughs> substantially more expensive. I think it's around three and a half thousand. This has like a ridge in the middle that's like a bump. Hopefully you guys can kind of see that. That will help protect your guitar even more. And this is way more rigid. I love these things. They just feel nice. But anyways, my other Taylor, it's a beautiful basic one, right? But this takes things to a new extreme. Oh, it's a small bodied one. I didn't realize that when we had ordered this. So, wow. This is the model GT611E. It's almost like a natural burst. They've got this whole whiteness in the center, but yet it's still a honey blonde with a little bit more of a bordered edge. Now looking at it, that's an actual real wood binding on the edge. Nice. So they've got like a maple binding on the edge, then they have like a mahogany binding, and then it just repeats that mahogany until it goes to the other black layer. That is extra fancy on this thing. But if that wasn't enough, your sound hole also has that same thing going on, but in the center, it's got some abalone going on there. And then our pick guard here is actually made out of wood too. It's supposed to be flame figured, but unfortunately it does not move. Maybe it would have if they would have gave it like a gloss finish. But then, wow, even your inlays on the fretboard, that's real mother of pearl, that's for sure. But it's got that ivoroid binding along each and every single one of those. But that looks like an ebony fretboard with a little bit of streakiness to it. And then we have a nice glossy headstock, real wooden truss rod cover. Even that inlay has the ivoroid around it. Just the top though, the knife part doesn't have that. But now I save the best parts for last. This is what I was talking about. We chose this one because of the beautiful maple figuring back here. It's got a little bit of chevron right here, whereas the rest of it is just a whole bunch of nice natural figuring. And then you see the sides and yeah, <laughs> you're paying a lot for cosmetics on this thing. And in my experience, you don't see acoustics get maple used too often. So having a maple acoustic like this is very nice. Even our bridge pins have abalone in it.
So, I will be shipping this one out of the country very shortly, but I hope you guys enjoyed taking a look at it before then. I always love these unique forwarding service guitars, because I would have never bought this thing otherwise. I just love appreciating guitars of all makes and manufacturers. It's just, as far as me buying it, generally I stick to, you know, the big name brands. And now we've got one more to share yet today. So this thing right here, it, it did ship in a box, don't worry. It didn't come from Canada looking like this. However, it had his address plastered all over it and mine. And so it's like, I just took it out of the box, but I have not actually seen this thing. I have been looking for one of these things for such a long time. And I'm thrilled that I was finally able to find one in a clean condition to document. And then wouldn't you know it, the day this darn thing arrives, Another one shows up on Reverb that's just slightly nicer in its figuring. So we're only going to unbox this one, then it's available for sale because I've got that other one coming that I want to document. So we will see a review and demo on this very cool base. What model is that? That comes in a snakeskin Gibson USA case. This, my friends, is known as the Nikki Six base. So, if you remember, all the way back to Trade Tuesday, we actually had the Epiphone version of this bass, or at least one of the variants. And I said in that video, I've always wanted one of these things because they're just super cool. I haven't had too many Thunderbirds in my life, but I've recently became infatuated with some of the really cool and rare Firebirds of the guitar format, so I would like to check a few more of these things out. But what makes this one interesting is the fact that it actually has flamed maple sides with the whole neck through construction. Now this one has some exceptional figuring within the wood, but since these started life as a satin finish, it, it doesn't really move too much. So you kind of want to find one that has a design that looks good. Now you might be thinking, hey, this one looks a little bit weird. That's because it doesn't have the original pick guard on it. Now it's supposed to be in here. Yeah, there we go. Why somebody would replace the beautiful Nikki Six red one, I don't know. That is awesome. So that's how they did that. They just sprayed it red. And with the thanks of movie magic, here you can kind of see what it's supposed to be like. We'll learn more about one of these here in a couple of weeks because hopefully that other one is even nicer than this. I mean, this isn't too bad. I wouldn't have been disappointed to document this one either. But these are all the way from 2012, Nikki Six Signature. He has a few of them, but again, we'll, we'll talk about those later, including this weird little thing right there. So, I might have told you this was the last one we'll do today, but I'll tease you. I'll tease you before we go into the boxing up stories. I had a viewer of the show reach out to me. He had a couple of Gibsons that he was wanting to sell. One that we have just reviewed a day or two ago. This is the other guitar that I purchased alongside that modern double cut Sparkle. Now, I'm not actually going to show you this whole thing, because if I show you something and then review it, generally the views just tank on that review because people don't want to click on the video because they think they already know about it. But this thing... Just wait until you get to see what is inside this really rare Flying V's case. I'll give you a hint. It's cool. It's a limited edition of 50, but this is not... A Karina style flying V. That's all the hints I'm going to give you. So be sure to stay tuned for when this review and demo comes out here in a couple of weeks. We've got four guitar stories to talk about. First off, that modern DC. Somebody had contacted me a few weeks before I had even purchased that guitar and they said, hey, I'm looking for one of these modern double cuts if you ever see one. He wasn't necessarily looking for this semi-hollow version or the blue finish, but when I was looking through my messages and I saw that he was looking for one, I was like, hey, I just picked this up. And to be honest, if he wouldn't have bought that, I would have kept it because that was just how cool that was. But I had a very expensive guitar fall in my lap that we'll talk about in a couple of days. So I had to let that one go. Next up, there were a couple of new Guitar Day purchases. That was that Jaguar that was more of a jazz master. That was a beautiful thing. I really loved the way that one sounded after I listened back to the review when it was done being edited. I personally liked it because it was different, but there's a lot of Jag fans out there that are like, I don't like this because it, they took everything that was a Jag away from it. I get it, but I thought it was nice because I like weird guitars, especially Les Pauls when they're like misconfigured triple single coils. They're just weird. That's what I like. 
The four Les Paul, that one was another new Guitar Day purchase and was a very awesome guitar. I'm supposed to still have one for myself if I wanted to keep it coming, but I never count my chickens until they hatch when it comes to the guitar market today. And then our last one was that Kramer Vanguard. I ended up selling it to somebody who that was their first Kramer as well. That's only going about two hours away, so hopefully it survives the trip okay. But I really like that Kramer. It was like 900 bucks. I had sold it pretty cheap because the aforementioned very expensive guitar that I needed to buy. But that was a fun guitar. And hey, Charlie actually subscribed to the channel. So hey, Charlie, if you're watching. Hey, how's it going? All right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed the unboxing episode today. I will work on this review, and I will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.